Hello, this video will talk about and show some examples from chapter 1.7 in our pre-calculus book. The book that we're using, it says pre-calculus with limits, and the main authors are Larson and Battaglia. Um, everything that I say in this video is not comprehensive review of this chapter, but it will have some of the main points, some clarifications, and some sample problems. I do try to take different sample problems on the ones that the book gives you, so use the book as a resource. Like if you're not understanding the book, come watch the video. Or you know, I'm probably going to make you watch the video. Anyways, watch the video. And if you need some more examples, go into the book and take a peek. Um, so you are responsible either way for um, reading the book chapters as well. So that's pre-calculus. The topics that we're talking about in chapter 1.7 use vertical and horizontal shifts to sketch graphs, use reflections to sketch graphs, and use non-rigid Transformations to sketch graphs. That looks like the word we, but it says use. I apologize for my handwriting. Um, so let's get started. At any point, feel free to hit pause as we're doing problems and trying them on your own. And then you, know, like you can hit play again. Um, hit pause to take some notes. Uh, so here's a good chart. Rigid transformations versus non-rigid. Rigid just means that um, it preserves the shape. And when you studied it in geometry, it sh preserved the shape um, and the size, nothing changed. So the examples that we're doing in Algebra 2 are shifts, you knew them in geometry as translations, and reflections, which are flipping things. Non-rigid transformations changes the shape. It will become distorted. And what we're going to be looking here are stretches and, and the word that we use in the books is shrink. But I feel like that's a verb, so I use compression. So stretches and shrinks, I guess, um, would be the most appropriate thing. So let's get started. Vertical and horizontal shifts are rigid transformations. Here's how a change in the equation makes the shift happen. This slide's all about vertical, moving up and down. Um, so the vertical shift to get something to move up. Um, after the function, you add a number. If you want something to shift downwards, you would subtract a number. So the C is just some random number. So if you have a graphing calculator or you can go to the Desmos graphing calculator, um, type in those three, three things. Hit what you know. Hit your um, graphing. I, I guess the standard is the T Texas Instruments 83 or 84. Um, but you know, just go into. I don't know if I can get it to show on my. Uh, but go into this here and type one of the equations in y1, the second equation in y2, and the third equation in y3. Um, you don't need me to do that because I'm asking you to do that. Um, and you have access either to the decimals graphing calculator or to your own. And that will show you exactly what is being set up above. You can see the plus 4 has taken the x squared and moved it up 4 units. The minus 6 has taken that x squared and moved it down 6 units. Um, same idea here, but now we're talking about horizontal shifts backwards. Um, so what I like about the vertical ones is the vertical ones are easy to remember. If you're adding, you're going up. If you're subtracting, you're going down. Horizontal is it's the opposite. You can notice that before you apply the function, if you subtract a number, you don't go left, which would be the negative. You go right. Okay, so it's the opposite. Um, for the horizontal shift to the left, you're going to be adding a value to your independent variable before you um, run it through the function. So that will be the different um, thing. And again, grab your um, graphing calculator or you click onto the decimals graphing calculator and type those in. Um, pause this video while you're doing that and you can see exactly what happens. So the x minus 5 doesn't go left, but it goes right 5 units. So here's a, um, an equation. We can see write the equation g of x shown below. Don't forget to restrict the domain. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So we can see that this is coming from the parent function. Um, actually, I can't write that with my text. So the parent function for this is, um, I'm just going to write that y equals square root of x. That's our parent function. I suppose I could have said f of x. Um, so that is our parent function. And what we can see is normally the square root function starts here and goes up. Oops, I had the wrong part of my mouse selected. Whoops, really horrible thing there, but you get the idea. So we can see that the parent function normally starts at zero and it has shifted to the left four units. So for shift to the left, we need to um, apply that shift before we take the square root 
So that means that we're going to have that shift kind of taking under the square root. When, since it went to the left four units, we would add four units. All right, so your equation, and it shouldn't say y, it should say g of x. Oops. Because, and why, why am I changing it? Because my instruction said to write the equation g of x. So g of x. I would do this much better with a mouse than on um, a touchpad. So maybe I will get my mouse activated. There we go. So g of x would equal um, square root of x plus 4. And that entire thing is under the radical. Notice the plus 4 is under the radical. Write the equation of h of x shown below. So once again, we do have that square root function as the parent function. So for that, it would normally look like this. It would start at 0, 0. We can see that it got shifted up two units, right? And not only that, but then it got shifted to the right one unit. So our parent function got shifted up and to the right. Hopefully I got that right. My lefts and rights are not my strong point. Um, all right, so then if we're going to write the equation, and again, I would need to write the equation of h of x. So the shift um, sideways or horizontally, that is uh, how many units? That is one unit to the right, and we have to do that inside the square root. So since we're going to the right, it's going to be x minus 2, and then after that, we are shifting it, whoops, <laughs> we are shifting it, what did we say, up two units, so outside, whoops, that's not a two, can't talk about numbers and write them the same, so it shifted to the left, to the right one unit, and then after that, it got shifted up two, sorry about that, if I got those a little bit backwards, um, so it shifted to the right one, and up two so to the right one happened inside we buy the minus one up two is the plus two at the end write the equation of f of x shown below so again this is the absolute value is our parent function and normally the absolute value comes in like this and comes up like that so we can see that it got shifted how many it got shifted up one, two, three, up to, um, whoops, sorry, that's too high up. We want to track, the, like I'm tracking this vertex here. So the vertex went up four, and then it went right two. So f of x is equal to, I'm going to draw the absolute value in in just a minute. So if it went to the right two, and then after the absolute value, it went up four, And then I need to just come back and draw these absolute value signs. So the shift to the right happens inside the absolute value. And then the shift up happens after the function's been applied. Okay. Let's shift over and do some more examples on paper. Um, let me find my pen. Okay. So describe the transformations that occur to the parent function. Okay, so first of all, what is the parent function? I'm going to call the parent function f of x. So the parent function here is our cubic, right? So our parent function would be x cubed. Um, to describe it, what we can see is inside our parentheses before it gets cubed, so this happens directly to our independent variable, it's um, subtracting 5 from it. So if we have a subtraction of 5, it's not going to move it left, but it's going to move it right. So it's going to move um, f of x five units to the right. Um, and what we could say, we could write it like this. This equation takes our um, parent function, sorry, kind of spaced out, and moves it to the right. So that's another way that we could um, do that. Um, that's it for number two. Again, this is some equation. We have to figure out the parent function. Well, I'm seeing the square root there. So our parent function is just a square root of x. Okay. What we can see is inside the square root, we're adding 9. 
So the transformation that happened is it moved the parent function nine units to the left. Okay, and again, we could, we could express it this way. We could say that g of x is equal to f of x plus nine. Okay, so that's one way to express this equation as the parent function showing those um, units. Okay, we have two more. Um, g of x equals this. So a lot of gobbledygook, it's getting a little more complicated, but we're going to take the same steps. We're going to say, all right, what's going on here? I'm um, just trying to see if there's a way to zoom that in just a smidge. Um, we have the squared. So our parent function is y equals x squared or f of x equals x squared. So we have two shifts happening. Inside the parentheses, we have a plus 3. So it's going left 3. The minus 7 happens afterwards. So it's moving at left 3 units and down 7 units. Okay. And we could express g of x as um, some form of f of x. And what we would say is f of x plus 3 minus 7. Okay, so that takes the equation they gave us and shows it in terms of the parent function. Forget, uh, let's do number 4. Okay, for this one here, we have a rational function. So the parent function, you could also call it a reciprocal, is this guy. So we have two shifts happening. Again, the minus 2 is happening directly to the independent variable. So that means it's going right to. The plus 4 is happening afterwards, so it's moving up 4. So the shift is right 2, up 4. And again, we could write this as um, f of x minus 2 plus 4. All right, so that's how you could come up with some equations um, and some transformations if they give you an equation. Okay, so reflections are rigid transformations. They flip either over the x-axis or over the y-axis are the ones that we're going to study. Um, reflection in the x-axis um, it's almost like testing, right? If we have the, if we apply a minus or an opposite sign outside after the function's been applied, um, that would happen. And if we, um, alternatively, to ch check for reflection in the y-axis, if we um, put in the opposite of x and then run it through the function, that would show reflection in the uh, y-axis. So again, if you want to see this on your graphing calculator, type those three equations in, hit graph, and you'll see exactly what's happening there. One will flip over the x, one will flip over the y, and you'll see the parent function right at the top. Write the equation of the red graph shown below. The blue one is the parent function. So we can see that the blue one is the square root function. Um, and then I'm going to try doing it with text and coming back and putting the square root sign. So we can see that it reflected over the x-axis. Um, so we're going to write f of x equals, and I'm going to come back and put the square root in in a minute. So we have to do minus, and then the square root will come in of x. So let me grab my pencil. There we go. And that will flip it over. Write the equation of both graphs shown below. So you have to kind of just go back and take a Good look. We don't have the origin here. Don't be faked out that the part where my cursor is is the origin. Um, the origin is actually way down here somewhere. So let's tackle the red one first. We can see that the parent function is y equals x squared. Um, and then this red graph looks like they just took that y equals x squared and they moved it up six units. So I'm going to put red and I'll call it g of x equals and to move something up, we do the x squared first, and then we'll add a 6. Okay, for um, the blue one, what we can see happened here is it looks like it got reflected and then shifted up. So it got reflected over the x. So should I switch to blue? Um, so for the blue, whoops. 
call that h of x. So um, it's going to be um, minus and then x squared. And then once it was reflected, it got shifted up 4. Okay, so minus x squared. Um, and notice the difference with this. I just want to say that again. You should be aware of this already. But notice that I didn't put it like this, minus x with parentheses around it squared, um, because that would be something different. Okay. Ah, can't make the squared. There we go. Ish. Okay. Let's go forward. Vertical stretches and shrinks are non-rigid transformations because the shape gets distorted. Um, and you're going to want to write that the stuff down that's in green. Um, there's If you have a function and you multiply it, after you run a number through the function and you multiply it by a number, um, it's going to stretch vertically. That's up and down. You can see this on your graphing calculator. If you um, put those three equations in and graph it, you'll be able to see it shrinking vertically. Those are good examples. So if the number you multiply um, the function by is bigger than one, it's going to stretch vertically. That feels okay. Like if you're multiplying by a number bigger than one, it should get bigger. Um, if you pick a fraction between zero and one, um, the fun function will shrink vertically. And again, you can look at your graphing calculator, see how those are. Hit pause and do that whole thing. For um, non-rigid transformation with horizontal, like getting, you can't see me, but I'm moving my arms outwards, horizontal stretches and shrinks or compressions. These rules almost see that seem the same, but what we're doing in this case is we're multiplying the independent variable first before we run it through the function. So that kind of changes everything. If we use a number bigger um, than one this time, it's going to shrink horizontally and for if we use a number to multiply by that's between zero and one, it's going to stretch horizontally. And again, I think the functions that are listed below, if you graph all of those, you'll see that um, pretty, pretty clearly in your graphing calculator. Okay, let me get just some more problems we're going to do. Again, if you want to start doing these problems, hit pause, try them on your own. Um, then I think that's, that's the way to go. So let's see, um, find the right tab. Describe the transformations that occur to the parent function. Um, so first of all, our parent function is f of x equals x cubed. Okay, when I look through, I can see I have a minus two. So in, this is how I process it. Some of you guys won't need to do this, but I need to kind of just in my head, what happened? We went right two units, that's from the minus two. This here um, puts the negative sign out front, so it gets reflected over the x-axis. Okay, and so those are the things that I need to keep track of. The cubed was just part of our parent function, so don't be thrown off by that. The minus 2 is in the parentheses, so it's going to move it um, right. And then finally it's got that. So that is the transformation that happened to the parent function. For number 2, this one seems a little funky. Um, when I first looked at it, I was like, okay. And what I want you to realize is you could do this. Um, you could rewrite it as negative x plus 1 squared minus 3. Right, that's legal. The 3 is minus, negative here. It's negative there. The x plus 1 is being subtracted in the way that they gave it to us. It's being subtracted here. So that's the same. And for me the way that my brain works. This is easier for me to process what's going on. We have a plus one, so it's going to be shifted one unit. We have a minus three, so it's going to be going shifted, going shifted, it's going to be shifted down three units. And then we have this minus sign out front, um, so it's going to reflect it across the x-axis. Okay. We have uh, two more. Again, feel free to pause these um, and give them a whirl. So for this equation, our um, parent function for whatever it's worth is the absolute value of x. We can see that the independent variable is being um, multiplied right off the bat. 
before it gets thrown through there. So that means that we're going to be shrinking. I'm going to see if I can see if I still have it on my screen. So it's this case here. And the C that we're using is two, which is bigger than one. So it's going to shrink horizontally. All right. Um, for problem number four, the last one, our parent function is the square root of x. And so what you can see is that the um, constant that we're multiplying it by happens after the square root is taken. So we're talking about a vertical change here. And this number that we're multiplying by is between 0 and 1. So this is going to shrink vertically. All right. And again, there are plenty of um, other... I'm just going here to shut off my screencast by. There's plenty of other examples in the book. Um, so feel free to go back and look at that. Um, and there's probably some Khan Academy videos as well. So I will see you at the next video.